Desperate for a safer or more prosperous life, millions of people have sought refuge in Europe. Sometimes their dreams have come true, sometimes disenchantment and hostility have driven them home. In the second of two films on these conflicting experiences, People and Power has been to the Gambia, where disillusioned former migrants are trying to persuade others from following the same path. Their dream was of a better life in Europe. Their return to Gambia has put an end to all such aspirations. A group of 140 would-be migrants, all of whose journeys have gone badly wrong, being repatriated by an international NGO. Libya is, I can call it a military place or a jungle place because it's a very hard place, very, very hard for survival, life and everything because anywhere you are, your life is in danger. As ladies, we are sexually abused and all those things. There are a lot that cannot be said out. Imprisonment, exploitation, violence, drowning at sea, just a few of the hazards migrants face when trying to get to Europe. And even for those who make it, the reality of life as an unwelcome arrival can be far from ideal. In 2017, over 2,700 Gambians gave up on their dreams, either because they couldn't get beyond Libya or because public hostility and increasingly tough immigration laws deterred them from trying to stay in the EU. They had no option but to come back and try to rebuild their lives. But with democracy beginning to function here again, after years of autocracy, and the economy also now showing signs of life, some Gambian returnees are rediscovering their faith in their homeland. The outskirts of Banjul, capital of the Gambia. Yeah, we're gonna have a successful tour, huh? Mustafa and Karamo first met in a Libyan prison. Together, they endured violence and privation and became close friends. They also made each other a promise to one day warn others who might be tempted to follow the same path. I come with this idea one night. It's like a dream to me that we are forming an association against this journey because this journey is very, very horrible. And the promise that we take each other to leave you, then that promise that we are fulfilling as of now. We are not discouraging them from migrating, but we are discouraging them from going through this back way, traveling irregularly, going to someone's country without any document, you know? Because I experienced that as a foreigner living in a foreign country without documents. You are nobody there. Even if you are dead, nobody will identify you. You will be thrown away. Other former failed migrants have signed up for the association, all of them volunteers, preparing to join Mustafa and Karamo on a remarkable mission crisscrossing the country. Their aim is to discourage anyone who might be considering the perilous journey that's known to all here as the back way. How people will receive the message, um, it depends, because like there are other families who are enjoying the advantage of this irregular migration and you have other families who are suffering from it. There must be some people who will feel bad about it. Yeah, these people, maybe they go and lose, that's why they are, they, are, they are saying this. Yeah, some will say that because some have been saying that to us. Yeah, but that will not discourage us. And if we are able to change our one person, yeah, we've achieved something, yeah. But you fail it, you may fail it. Mustafa grew up here in Sarakunda the eldest of six children. 
His family amassed large debts to help fund his attempted migration, in the hope that Mustafa, an IT technician, could find a good job in Germany. Today, they're still paying a high price for the sacrifices they made. This is what? This is fish and bread crops. Fish and bread crops. Money. Despite his failure and the family's many problems, his mother refuses to turn her back on him. At the beginning, she was telling me, like, you have to go and look for a job because this is not bringing anything for you and the family. You know, as the eldest son of the family, you have to try. I know that you try, but you have to look for a job yeah, in order to help us. Yeah. So, but I used to tell her, don't worry, with this association, our lives can be changed. Yeah, because we are also trying to create job opportunities for the youth. And I'm sure I will make her proud. I will make her the best mom. Yeah. Today, Mustafa and Karama's dream is finally coming true on a ferry heading across the mouth of the river Gambi to the country's northern shore. With them are 15 volunteers from the association, all former migrants like themselves. After months of planning and trying to get financial backing for the trip, the mood is upbeat. I'm happy. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know how to say it, but I'm, you know, and this was the first project that we took. We took it to, yeah, we took it to different organizations, institutions, governments, and NGOs, you know. But after seven months, we were lucky to have it from the Germans, yeah. I believe this irregular migration is their concern and is something uh, that is affecting the country. For five days, their convoy will tour rural areas, where years of relentless poverty and unemployment have forced people to take desperate measures. The Gambia is the smallest nation in West Africa, but it's been one of the largest contributors to the migrant flow across the Mediterranean. It's the youth against irregular migration. This is an association from the Mediterranean, from Libya. Their first stop is St. Michael's School in Yungone, one of the biggest in the Northern Territories. To raise awareness amongst the students, Mustafa and his team have written a play based on their own experiences. Here, migration is a tradition going back decades, a much-traveled route out of hardship. Where are you going? Back where? I'm going to Parkway, yes. Oh my God. Yeah, I'm going to Parkway. Don't even think about it. Why? Don't. Why? 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 Because it is a horrible journey and a deadly journey, my brother. And the hundreds of thousands that you're going to spend on this journey, if you put it into business, within one year you become a millionaire. Don't you know that? Yeah, but my agent told me that he will help me within two weeks, then I'll, be, I'll sit myself in my It's brother. a big lie. He's you know, a liar. All these agents are liars. Because most of those agents will never try the back way. They'll keep sending you. Do you know how many brothers and their sisters have they killed? Yeah, he told, thousands he told me and thousands he had and thousands, 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 thousands of And some of these agents are Gambians, our Gambians brothers, whom you think that they will help you out there whilst they will sell you to the bad people. After the count of two, together, together we can make it. Yeah. Hope you enjoy the drama that we played here. So all I want for you is to be concentrated on your education. Opportunities are here, so let's try and reach those opportunities and try to benefit from it. Later that afternoon, the school's economics and social sciences teacher reinforces the message. International migration has become a very serious problem, wherein we see many people leaving Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa in particular. Now, one important question for all of you. 
Is there anybody who has someone who has ever involved in this illegal migration? You have one? Yes, but he passed away. He passed away? Yes. They have accident. The boat entered inside the river. In the river. Yes. Why do you have to go and involve yourself in an illegal migration, an irresponsible migration? You are those that we believe can build up this nation. We all yearn for a new Gambia, not so? We say we are living in a new Gambia. A new Gambia means we must be responsible enough to stand firm upon our words, to bend down on the ground and walk towards the development of our country. Nevertheless, higher education is very expensive in the Gambia, and even for those who get it, well-paid professional jobs are extremely scarce. Aspiration and rhetoric have yet to be matched by opportunity. Once you sensitize them, they need to see something tangible in the country. They need to see um, the, the, the government being responsible enough towards um, creating employment for youths. They need to see the government responsible enough towards building more um, tertiary schools wherein they will be able to study law, study medicine, study all the fields of education in their country. There are some people, no matter how you sensitize them, once they don't see these things in place, they will leave. The same challenges are found throughout the country. The convoy's next stop is Esso, a small town with a population of around 7,000. Here, Mustafa and his team plan to use a different kind of presentation, based around a large open-air projection screen. As elsewhere in the Gambia, people here get much of their news and information from social media. But it's also the medium which spreads most of the myths about how easy it is to get to a better life in Europe. The truth is that for the vast majority of migrants, those myths will turn sour. Taking migrants from North Africa to Italy and Malta from a Libyan port has been the deadliest in the Mediterranean. Images like these will be very familiar to viewers of Western media, but for many here, it's the first time they've been seen. Karamo is counting on them having a profound and lasting effect. I know him, you know. He used to beat people so much, you know. He took his gun, the pistol, you know. He hit your head until your head been all, you know, blood, you know. But if we showing these images to them, they will be knowing that what we feel there and what we are telling them also is something true. Because this is a real picture, you know? It's a real image, not a fake, it's a real image. If somebody wanted to go, you see this, you will reduce yourself. Akko, another ex-migrant, has also experienced trauma and abuse. Kidnapped while in Libya, she was forced into slavery for several months. Miraculously, she managed to escape, but her return to the Gambia brought new problems. Akko once dreamt of opening a beauty salon in Italy. Now she's having to rebuild her life with other young girls from the association. Together, they have found the courage to speak out. The following day, Mustafa and his convoy head towards Javakunda, a small farming community on which migration has taken a terrible toll. The backway has cost the lives of 500 of its people. 
is our concern to go there because uh, they, they are the most affected region or affected village in the, in the North Bank region and Gambia as well. And their village is developed through the remittances. So they also have uh, success stories, good size. But you know, like one life, uh, one life is more than all those assets and all those wealth. Yeah, it's one life. A meeting has been organized with Alaji Jain, the district chief, and some 20 local chiefs. The hope is that they'll use their influence so that the families stop condoning their children's departure. Mustafa and Karamo take to the stage to push the message further. In many Javakunda families, the eldest sons are long gone. Sana, a farmer, has stayed. He's the last of seven brothers to tend his family's land. Through the sweat of his brow, he somehow manages to look after acres of groundnut and cereal crops. But it's a desperately hard life. Yeah, we better because she was a mandoku. We na ngabula, so denga sene. Without machinery and with only a short rainy season, Sana's harvest rarely yields enough to support his family. Sana is from a generation of Gambians who lived through the oppressive rule of former President Yahya Jammeh. Deposed in 2017, after 22 years of brutal dictatorship and economic mismanagement, Jammeh failed to develop the country's rich agricultural potential. Fertile land, that with investment, could have provided jobs and plentiful food, was abandoned to mere subsistence farming. In Javakunda, inhabitants came to depend completely on money from the diaspora, which paid for a new mosque, brick housing for some, and for a fortunate few, tractors and farm machinery. Sana and his family are among those who rely on this revenue, receiving around 100 euros a month from his brothers working in Europe. Sana's father Jaite was unable to stop his other sons from leaving. One of them was killed crossing the Mediterranean. Now he would love to see an end to such departures. The Gambia is facing a dilemma. One quarter of its wealth comes from the earnings of its people working abroad. Developing the country's resources is more urgent now than ever before. Back across the river to the country's southern shore, 
Mustafa and Karamo have a new scheme in mind. Abli is a perfect example of migrant reintegration. After failing to get into Europe, he returned five years ago and decided to start his own chicken farm. Despite a tricky start, he now turns a profit and pays his employees a steady wage. These are small chicks. We normally import them from Senegal. Mm -hmm. And then for these ones, these are reared for meat, not for laying. We put fire here to warm the house. To heat the room. Yeah, to heat the room. Yeah. This is just about three, four days, 200 grams. 200 grams. Yeah. It is very profitable. Yeah, when you rear it for six weeks, if your market is fast, uh, you can see that you can sell and then have at least 30% uh, profit. Poultry is a good business and it's something that we have passion in it. Yeah, we even uh, have a land that we want to use as a poultry farm. With no way of getting a loan and no experience, Mustafa's young volunteers have a slim chance of success. Abli steps in and offers them training. Yeah, don't go push. No, back over, back over, back over. Wait. You don't need to uh, remove them from the playing box. The reason why unemployment rate is very high in this country is because the authorities fail to promote the local industry. For example, poultry. If we produce locally, then imagine how many people, how many youths would have engaged into this business that will uh, give them employment. Abli hopes that the new government will learn from the failures of the past and put aid money from the EU to good use. The country has been allocated around 15 million euros specifically to create jobs and train young people. When a country has a lot of youths with nothing to hold on to, it can lead to robbery, uh, increasing crime rates, trying to steal in. Yeah, all this can happen. Frustration can lead to the stability of this country. Abli's story is inspirational. But for Mustafa's group to persuade other would-be migrants from leaving, something more concrete than optimism about the Gambia's future might be needed. We're at the Barat Road terminal, one of the country's busiest. The young people here have lost faith in the promise of change. Like so many before them, their gaze is fixed on Europe. 19-year-old Ibrahim says there's nothing to stay for. They are our childhood friends. We are together here playing football, going to school together. But some are in Germany, some are in Italy. Yes. That also is true. Some people are suffering there, we know, but some people also make it. But here we cannot make it. No one can make it here. All of us are suffering. Yes. Because Libya is hard. I'm waiting for the next way. If I hear another way, would you know peace is there? Yes, I can take my way and go. One proposed new route is anything but safe. Incredibly, some here are hoping to use a canoe to cross the Atlantic to the United States. In the face of such determination, Gambia's returned migrants clearly have much persuading still to do.